Hello, sports fans. Ed Dale here. Of course, it's me. It's my channel. You know, it's how it goes. Very exciting today. Two things. We're going to introduce you to the Persona Forge prompt, and you're going to be able to download it and use it for yourself. I'm going to explain what that is. You might also know this is a screencast. It's like back to the old days, but with a very cool thing. And it just happens to be a good case of timing. I'm actually filming this in Hawaii. I know. Sympathies accepted. It's great, but Anthropic here on the left-hand side of your screen have released Claude 2. And my legends in my Substack mentioned that, hey, the super prompts really work really well with Claude 2. And so I thought, hey, let's do a side-by-side -side demonstration of the Persona Forge prompt using both search engines. So we're going to use Claude 2. And we're going to use chat GPT for us. So a little bit of feeding two birds with one scone type of deal. So very pleased about that. Should remind uh, yourself that remember the reason we're doing this, it's part of a video series on market testing and how to use AI in market testing. I put, and there'll be a link down below to all the resources and previous videos. And there's a big report that I did, which you absolutely should download and get about how to use AI and how to think about using AI in market testing. Because remember in the challenge, we skip market research, we go straight to market testing. But to do that with AI, we need to create characters. Remember from our original work in super prompts, your prompt will just work way better if you're able to, you're able to use what we call the system part of the prompt to give context. And so when we're doing market testing, we want to be able to use norm, the, the normal Joe and Jane Smith of your marketplace. And so I developed this prompt to do that. And as you'll see, it does quite a bit more as well. It's the first stage of this process. So today I'm going to show you how it works and show you Claude 2 in all its glory. Claude 2 is free as we record this in July of 2023, and it's also only available in the UK and the US at this point. So happy coincidence that I happen to be in Hawaii, although one of my paid Legend subscriber members, because I released the Persona Forge prompt to them early, mentioned that he could use a VPN and still access Claude 2, because you'll see why in just a minute. All right, let's get to it. Let's load up the Persona Forge prompt in both of these engines and let's we'll walk through it and see what happens. Oh, and don't forget the actual prompt and everything. There's a link down below. We'll give you the, the prompt. We'll give you a couple of other really cool things that will show you access to the market testing report, the whole box and dice. No email required, just a link that's got everything there together. So we've loaded in both of these. I can't start them exactly at the same time. So we'll get Claude off you go and ChatGPT off you go. There we go. Boom shakalaka. Hello, I'm Claude, your personal Forge, Persona Forge coach, I should say. Great to meet you. What's your name? I'm looking forward to working with you today to explore a business niche and create some personas. This will be a fun and productive session to start. What niche are you interested in exploring for a potential business? I'm not going to read all of these out from now, but I think it's uh, interesting. So I'm just going to do exactly the same in each, just so we can see a comparison. So notice it asks for the name and it asks two questions at once, which I'm normally not a fan of, but we will type Ed and sausage making. Let's see if it picks it up. Sausage making. We'll let Claude cook on that. Pardon the puff. Let's go, Ed and Sausage Making. And let's go. Bam. I certainly, for the for ChatGPT, I can put the link of this actual conversation, and I will put that in the video. I'm not sure if I can do that with Claude, but I will do it. And they're both... Busy away. This, how should I put this prompt? We just need it to create the personas. So we want the first thing we do is we want to create the personas. So let's have a look in here we go. So great, Ed. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> Persona one, Frank Furter. Oh, I love it. You'll see why I did that when you read into the details of the prompt. And we'll do it as always, we'll do a director's cut of this prompt 
in the following video, but I just want you to see it working and I want you to get in and try it for yourself. So we can see demographics. He's a 45 year old living in Chicago, Illinois, $45,000 a year, loves grilling and making his own sausages as a hobby needs, wants to improve. You can see all that communication, buying habits, usage. So it broke that down just from a layout perspective. It's okay. It's fine. Totally fine. But when you'll see what happens when we go to chat GPT, he's Sally McKinnon lives in Austin, Texas. Both of those, you know, to me in my limited knowledge of sausage making, Austin and Chicago are big sausage towns. Long. Gary Goldman here, 62 year olds and lives in Brooklyn, New York. Runs a small butcher shop, income $78,000 a year. Look, yeah, this is great. These pass the sniff test. So this is good. So let's have a look. What do you think, Ed? Do these personas help capture some different potential customer segments? Let me know if you have any other questions. If you're ready, I can go ahead and create some prompts to help role play those personas in future conversations. Perfect. That's what we want. So I'll send Claude on the way and let's have a look at what ChatGPT cooked up. Oh, on fire. Oh, ah, so here we are, Ed and Sausage Making. Use my name. Great to meet you, Ed. Sausage Making. What an interesting niche. It's got plenty of room for creativity. In terms of types of sausages and the processes itself, let's dive right into creating some diverse personas that could provide insights into your potential market. Jim, the backyard chef. Love it. So they give a name and sort of a type, which is classic persona creation. Classic. And if you've done any studying in avatar and persona creation, that's exactly what they want you to do. And you can see here, like from a layout perspective, it's just very neat. ChatGPT is very neat in the way that it lays stuff out, particularly for in particular. So this is good. Again, you can go all these conversations, particularly the ChatGPT for conversations will be in the link. So you can have a look at that. I won't read them all out, but we've got Rachel, the foodie millennial who's in New York City and Hank, the retired grandpa. Three different mixes and matches. And I bet if I asked either of them to create more personas, they would, but we won't do that today. We're just going to follow the direct process. And I encourage you to explore. I've actually put in the post, a couple of links of some of our paid legends and what they have done with this prompt in some ways, a very positive thing. And indeed, when you try to sell us, shall I say, break the prompt, you know who you are, Sam Vitavine, who we're going to be talking about very shortly. In fact, let's talk about Sam now. Sam runs a YouTube channel and longtime challenger and information marketer come AI genius and Google consultant and all this sort of stuff. Sam actually has done a great video on Claude 2. Link is down below. I encourage you to have a look at that after you've watched this one. So check that out as well. As I say, all the links below. Uh, fantastic. I'm glad these personas resonate. Here are three prompts to allow me to role play as each persona in future conversations. Hey, Ed, Frank here. Man, I've been struggling to get my homemade Sausage is just right lately. The flavor is never quite how I want it. And stuffing casings, what a pain. Got any tips or tricks you can share with a sausage amateur like me? I'd love to hear your thoughts on the equipment, recipes, ingredients, the works. Let's chat sausage, buddy. So I would, ha I would have to go and look at these. These are not quite what I would want, right, from the personas. I wouldn't want this. This is, I'm going to, I'm not going to experiment right now. And I encourage you to check out with Claude too, but I'm sure if I ask Claude to say, Hey, Claude, could you give me these in a descriptive format so I could use them to start role play conversations with you? I think it would do that. All right. When we go over to ChatGPT, have a look at what ChatGPT has done. So let's switch over there and you'll see what I mean. Fantastic it. Now that we have our personas fleshed out, we can create prompts that you can use in future conversations with me to role play. Let's have a look at these prompts here. So prompt chat GPT, assume the persona of Jim, the backyard chef who loves grilling. I'm considering introducing a new range of sausage flavors. Let's discuss how Jim would react to this and what flavors he might prefer. Chat GPT, become Rachel, the foodie millennial and food critic. Fantastic. So these prompts should help you conduct simulated interactions with your target personas, which in turn can help you tailor your business plans and strategies according to their preferences and goals. For example, a conversation with Jim might help you decide on the kind of sausage places to include in your product range. A chat with Rachel could give you insights on how to market your products on social media, while a dialogue with Hank could help you explore the viability of a family-centered sausage making kit. This is nuts, right? You'll notice that Claude didn't do that. However, Claude did a pretty good job. And as I say, if we keep chatting with Claude, same with GPT 3.5 is really struggling with super prompts right now, all right? Often it'll just do everything and run it in one go. And here's the thing, these prompts make 
mistakes. ChatGPT4, like I've designed it so that the prompt works on ChatGPT4, but it's because it's paid. With Claude 2, it's free, but it does a really good job and it does a much better job than ChatGPT 3.5. So I'd be using Claude 2. If you're looking for a free alternative, it's winning as far as I can tell and in other tests I've conducted. Here we go. We've got these all prepared. And honestly, that's the win. That's what we needed for our own testing purposes. But you'll see, I thought, hey, let's see if we can extend the utility of the prompt a little bit further. Let's see if we can do some role plays on the spot. So I'm just going to say to Claude, thanks. These are great. This is really interesting. I did actually ask for this in the prompt. And here, Claude 2 has done it. ChatGPT4 has not. And that's fine. I, In looking at the prompt, you'll see the prompt. I reckon it can be done a lot cleaner. And in fact, stay tuned because I'm going to show you how you can do that and how you can help out. However, let's have a look here. So it's done a bunch of a checklist of steps I'd recommend to start your research and validation process. So it's just given some really interesting ideas there. Let me know if you'd like me to elaborate on any of these action steps. I'm also happy to discuss and prioritize based on the specific goals and situation. What do you think of this high level plan? Fantastic. It's great. We can just drill deep. You don't have to just do everything literally. It's like you're speaking with an assistant, a brainstorming partner. To get more in the details, I'm excited for our role play session. Let me know when you're ready and I can jump into a persona character and we'll leave Claude to uh, work there. ChatGPT has said, Ed, time to roll up our sleeves and get into the role playing. You'll be the interviewer and I'll assume the persona. Who would you like me to pray first? Portray first, Jim, Rachel, or Hank? Fantastic. I think we'll do Rachel. Let's go over to Claude. And hey there, Ed, Gary Goldman here. Thanks for taking the time to chat with me today. As I mentioned before, I've been running the family butcher shop in Brooklyn for over 30 years. Grandfather originally opened it back in 57. This business has been slower. What would you recommend? So it's asking me some different things. I'm open to trying new sausage flavors and styles. But my family's traditional smoked kielbasa, tenacious defense, where I'm going with that. A hand ground all beef hot dogs are staples. This is marvelous. I'd really appreciate any guidance. Now, again, because I didn't correct it earlier, it's really like I'm being the consultant. But to honor the process, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask them both the same question so that we can have a fair sort of comparison. With Claude, I'm going to ask him, how? Do you stay up to date with sausage making trends, Gary? Question mark. I love that response though. That is so cool. Okay. Let's head over to ChatGPT. All right. I'm now stepping into the shoes of Rachel, the foodie millennial. Let's get this interview started. Can't wait to discuss the sausage making kits. What's your first question? So I'm going to ask exactly the same question. Let's just ask Rachel and regenerate the response. And let's go back and see what uh, Claude's doing. And so Claude, remember 60 year old, been in the business for, and I mean, this is just amazing. So there's a couple of industry magazine and journals, meat processing monthly and the art of sausage making. Now I would need to go and check to confirm if these were real, right? You can't take anything that is said here as real. So whenever there's a resource or something named, we have to go and fact check. But that is so much quicker and easier. Remember, I mentioned in our previous video, BARD, I think right now is the best tool for fact checking. That's another little hint and tip. So this is industry events. There's a big sausage making trade show down in Atlantic City. Probably need to take some more active research and see what, they, what they're doing. Appreciate you letting me thinking about this. Let's have a look across at ChatGPT4. Keeping up with food trends and practically a must. Social media is my go-to source. I follow a number of food influencers and culinary pages on Instagram and Twitter, and they provide a wealth of knowledge on what's currently trending in the food world, includes sausage making. Also subscribe to various food and culinary newsletters like Food 52, Serious Eats, and even the New York Times cooking session, regular cover trends, podcasts are another great source. Home cooking and gastropod are some of my favorites. I almost say, I also make a point of visiting local farmer markets and speaking to vendors there. They often have unique insights into emerging trends, especially in niche areas like sausage making. So that's essentially my secret sauce oh, to staying up to date. Great. So we got two very diverse but excellent responses. Again, every single detail, every time a resource is mentioned, like in Rachel's response here, sites like Food 52, Serious Eats, I know the new, there is a cooking session in the New York Times, and those podcasts, I would have to research and in future prompts, we'll actually build 
prompts, which will allow you to do all of this and get you data, but we'll just need to fact check and that's fine. So much better. I'm going to ask Rachel because I want to go deeper with some of the influences you are following on Twitter in the sausage making niche. I'll ask ChatGPT that and I'll ask our mate Gary. Gary, what do you see as the biggest challenge in researching new sausage types? And off we go and we'll let that conversation go. And then here we are. Twitter is quite a gold mine. And now here's a bunch of accounts. Now, again, we're going to have to fact check every single one of these, but it's so much easier to fact check just with what we've done here has turned something that used to take a week in the old challenge into an hour's work tops. And you can continue your conversations and figure all of that out. You can see here that Gary's got the, a few challenges there, lack of time, perceived cost. This is gold, pure unadulterated gold. Loyalty to family restaurant, uh, family recipes. Amazing. These are good customer expectations. You could go in and ask questions just like you would in a normal discovery interview to really get a feel for market testing. Now we know these personas work that they're producing. We can now use these in our future market testing prompts, which I'm going to show you all about in an upcoming part of the video series on market testing using AI. I want to show you a couple of things. The little blue report, you'll see this is where the link takes you. It's available for you. And this is a post I did just before for, well, a few days ago, actually, so that the paid members of the newsletter could get access to the, the prompts. They get to see all the stuff that, dare I say it, I'm cooking up. Oh, please. Something I did for free is I provided this report for everybody and you can access it by clicking the link below. Oh, I also do a podcast version of all of this stuff for paid subscribers as well, which is cool because some people, and I know I do, I like listening in the car or walking the dog. This is a 34 page report on the whole thinking behind how I've created this part of testing a market and my thinking on using market testing and AI. You can see it's all there. And indeed, some of the things which are interesting is I've left in sort of part of my process here. So you can have a look at how I'm thinking about and how I'm working. 